All right, so the big difference between mine and Phil's is mine doesn't require any sort of special anything to work. And somewhat ironically, this has been working at my desk as a Halloween thing for the past week and a half. Um, I typed it straight here, so I'm not entirely sure why I could have messed up in the meantime. But to make this one work, you're going to load up your Arduino IDE. Right now, this is just completely empty. This is going to be used to write all of your uh, C and C++ code. If you come down here to examples, they have a Fermata section. And if you come down to the standard Fermata, it's going to open up a new window. This standard Fermata is a standard way they came up with to basically have the device talk uh, sort of through a serial connection about everything that it knows how to do. So it'll broadcast and say, these are my pins, these are my capabilities, here's how I can make it run. And that's it. You can just tell it to go, and away it will go. With that, so once you run that on there, it'll just run, and that's what it's doing right now, is just running that, that standard Vermont protocol. Microsoft has given this, oh, real quick sidetrack. So we did post the, uh, the link to your giveaways, which is just here on the email site for the outdoor meeting. Anyway, uh, Microsoft has created a new framework which is Remote Arduino. Actually, no, that's the one. Yep. Anyway, it'll link you to a tutorial, which will eventually bring you to not this app. That is the wrong one. Actually, I'm going to have it on this one. But anyway. So, I really do want to get the app for downloads. Um, you don't actually need it. The whole point of this is that you can set up a Windows 10 device, uh, which your laptop would camp for. Install a new package, um, or you can do everything manually. And then you can come down here and actually program to talk to your Arduino and control it from a Windows 10 application. So, you're going to come in, you're going to create a new project, um, they're going to add an existing one, but you can walk through this and get an idea of how everything works. What I've done over here is I have created a very simple, very ugly universal application for Windows, which is what I was about to run on the Windows phone, but for some reason Bluetooth keeps dying on the hardware. Really. Effectively what I've got is just a really simple main page. which all it has on it is a simple color picker, which you can probably see just right there. Okay, the color picker is just going to pull up your standard little color chooser and you pick your color and off you go. Inside the code behind it, normally I would break this out and do better architecture with it, but where it was just a really simple piece, this is good enough. Um, you can see I've got a new Bluetooth connection and this comes from the remote Arduino package, which you can just get through NuGet. So it's right there. Okay, and here I've hard coded in the uh, device name of my serial device, my Bluetooth in this case. That's going to create a new Bluetooth connection. Once I've got that, I can pass it into my remote device. Can you make that much, much bigger? Yeah. Is that better? A little more, maybe? It's not going to be much bigger than that, or else I won't be able to see it. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to sweep a little bit, it's, too, it's still too small. But, so I've got a Bluetooth connection here that gets passed into this new remote device instance. Um, I just tell it on the connection established, I want to come down here and run this stuff, and then I tell it to begin the connection. Once that gets paired up, down here, all I'm doing is saying, all right, I've got this red pin, blue pin, and green pin defined, and I want to define them as PWM. Okay, so like Phil was saying, pulse width modulation allows me to say, I want it to be on for this percentage of the time. And you can do different things with that. Um, once that happens, I just tell my UI that I'm connected, so it will show the color picker. When the color picker gets updated, I just grab the red, blue, and green value. I have to cast them to a U short. And then I tell it to write red, blue, and green to those pins. Okay, and then this is just person day and night that's all it is, and essentially from there I can actually control 
my RGB LEDs and control the color, control everything about them. If I disconnect my phone from the Bluetooth, it will continue to run that standard Ramada, which means the color that I chose will stay presented that way. So this is a really easy way if you know C-sharp, if you're a C-sharp developer and don't have any idea how to deal with the Arduino, you can basically just talk to it this way. In fact, now that I think about it, I can change this. We've got another bit here for this device. Anyway, I could do it over USB as well. Um, and make that work, actually. Just so I can show you how it works. And my, my problem is that I'm sure I'm going to do this and it still won't work. So Microsoft gives you this free little app that you can also run. It's fairly small, so hopefully we can install it quickly. do is allow me to actually disconnect the Bluetooth. Entirely. So my Bluetooth connection is now gone. Now I can take my USB cable. I've got a little stuff here because I need it be quite long enough. plug it in, and we can run it that way. So you can see it powers on through the, or the USB connection. I don't know how long this demo is going to take, because I'm just running over my cell network. So it might take a while. So in the meantime, we're going to move on to the next piece. So let's that download, we'll come back. All right, the other thing, oh hey. That's the Windows IoT thing that was downloading. Oh, just got installed. All right. So here you can see we can create a Bluetooth connection. I can also go to USB. And you can see I found it on COM5. So I can try to connect to it. This is going to go through the standard for mod. I actually have to enumerate all the different pieces that it needs. Your baud rate looks incorrect. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <coughs> All right, so once I have this running, That's cool. it'll give me access to every single one of the pins on my device. If you can see right here, I've got this LED that's just connected to pin 13. Now, don't ever do what I did. This is not connected through a resistor. I know this LED can handle it, so we're okay. Just don't do that, though. <laughs> but when I turn it on, you can see from the computer here that it actually does turn on the LED on the device which is what would have happened if I could figure out why the Bluetooth decided to make it normal. Okay, now if I come over here to my PLDUM, I can turn on PLDUM for pins 3, 5, and 6. And I have 3, 5, and 6 connected to my LED strips. Now I'm going to move the slider. Can you mind pointing out here? Let's pull that up. I saw it. It just flipped on. Just down when I clicked it. I can hear my dog. Okay. So, to kind of show Phil up a little bit, <laughs> he can do one little measly little color. But if I want to start mixing colors and create different variations, I can do that as well. Make a pink. Make a pink. Oh, that's going to be red. Pink. I'll pick if you want. <laughs> that's go. pretty good pink. Okay, so you can, you can control all this stuff. Um, but again, this is running just from the uh, their demo app. Um, if you want to connect to it through USB, just make or through Bluetooth, just make sure your Bluetooth connection is wired up correctly. You do the exact same thing, um, but Phil was saying one of your neighbors, you can control a whole string of these. And that guy put up more stuff yesterday. He's in for it. Yeah. <laughs> so and then you can send it to whatever phone you want. Um, if you want to, again, the Arduino is just running the program, so you can actually tell it either using this program or through the Arduino itself, you know, do these different animations and change color, cycle, whatever you want. So that's that's the basics of this. Everything else will be the same as Phil's, so we can jump on to something else. Questions on this one? All right. Yeah.
Yes. <coughs> What's this? Oh, I just want to talk about that. So, Phil had MOSFETs. Um, they can't see that. They can't see that. Phil had a single, it was one MOSFET. Yeah. A single MOSFET to control those LEDs. Again, like he said, these run on 12 volts. My Arduino is running through USB power, which is 5 volts. So, if you look here, these two pins are connected to my power supply, my bench power supply, which is 12 volts, roughly. Um, those are connecting the power to this black cable, which runs down here to the power connection on the LEDs. And we'll run the grounds back to these pins here. Normally, if I just wanted them on, I would just ground them out and they turn off. But what I'm doing is these long green cables here are running two pins 3, 5, and 6, which are the PWM pins on the Arduino. When the PWM signal turns on, so a pulse width modulation says, all right, for a given period of time, I want you to have the signal be on for, let's say, 12% of the time and then off for the rest. By doing that, you can change colors because you're only having the LED turn on for certain periods of time, and so it kind of pricks your eye and thinking it's a lighter color than it usually would be. By hitting the signal, the MOSFETs are going to then allow the current to run from the ground connection here back into ground, which is this little wire here, and continue on. The only difference between mine and Phil's is that this one is a FET array, so I've actually got five MOSFETs here that I can use, all just in one little package. So I have to use a bunch of little small ones like that. And again, this has the little heat sink on the back, and right now it's completely cool, so I'm not super worried about it overheating, but if I were, then I could just again screw into these two poles with a heat sink and it would be fine. Okay, other questions? All right. So, uh, let's move on to, actually I'm disconnect and turn this off. The next section, which is this here. So, the other piece that you can do in our Arduino is you can actually use them to make embedded, or not embedded, wearable components. Alex? Yeah, we're still on the, um, you're still on the other. Thank you. Um, I'm going to come in here really quick because it's the easiest set to show. Let's have some shoulder occlusion going on. So we'll show this back again. Um, this actually got out of date. I ended up removing these three circular rings of LEDs, and I've got another additional set of five strips of LEDs. This is effectively what you guys received in your giveaway today. You've got an Arduino Nano. And then you just have one of these, but yours has 12 LEDs in it? Actually, the yours 28. 28? Okay, yeah. well, those are a longer strip. Um, you're going to end up making something like this with it. If you get a pair of glasses or wherever you want to put them. Okay, so this is actually running on that Arduino. This is effectively how I wire up this stuff here. Um, for next year, I'm going to clean them up and actually 3D print everything instead of just a couple of pieces. This was just what I wanted to use to get it done for this year. Um, but you can use a bunch of these things. So Adafruit has something called the Gemma, which is a wearable Arduino. It's got eight pins on it, and you can actually use conductive thread don't worry about that. You can search for it, Gemma. Um, but it has a conductive thread that you can actually sew throughout your clothing and have it carry a current. So if you want to have different pieces of your clothing do different things, you can actually do that. I decided that I wanted to make something more Mega Man-esque. So I've got five strips of LEDs here. And that represents the five strips of LEDs that I have running around this little arm brace. Um, I did have some 3D pieces, which are these translucent pieces that hold the LEDs. When I make this next year, I'm just going to 3D print the whole cylinder and call it good. So I don't have to worry about it. But each LED strip is wired in. They contain, they have power and then a digital in source. All of these LEDs are controlled from one digital pin. So where this one, for each individual strip of LEDs, each individual color, I had to have a new pin. These will actually run full color changing, full addressable LEDs, all from one single pin. So I've got five of them. They're all wired into these little, <laughs> well, 
<laughs> we can <laughs> probably see <laughs> clippable harnesses, okay, which allow me to disconnect it between the two different pieces. Um, and then I've got little connectors for batteries. And I'm just using some of these uh, 3.7 volt lithium polymer batteries. So I've got two for the armrest, and then I've got two for the uh, LEDs inside the bucket, and then the Arduino's in there as well. So everything is wired up more or less like you see here. You've got one pin, which controls this entire strip of LEDs that runs down and then plugs into one of the pins on oops, right the Arduino. Very slowly without a mouse. So you can see I've got a button here which is going to control the on off, um, which is going to run to D3 in this case. It's not actually how I have it wired up there, more or less. And then each of the five strips are going to come into an individual digital output, which are these D series here. Okay, and then I've got these others. So I removed these three because I don't have the circular ones anymore, but I've got the next set of five just right here, which leaves me the one D13 that I can still use if I want to control the circular LEDs. If we look at the code here. Is there any way to make that text plot bigger? I think so. <clears throat> yep. Excellent. Okay, so um, this is going to be using Adafruit's NeoPixel library. This is exactly what you're going to use when you wire up your stuff. This NeoPixel library makes it super easy to actually tell it to deal with different pieces of the LEDs. Um, here I've got defined that there are 12 LEDs per strip, and there are 10 LEDs for each one of the strips in the cannon. There are five total strips. Um, I don't know why I've said, oh, yes I do. So my five strips for the actual arm brace are going to be on pins 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 7. This pin 6 is going to be used for the button. There's a reason why I had to use pin 6. I could have used one of, I think, three or four others, but pin 6 is important. And then the cannon is on 8 through 12. Um, I actually deleted this. I'm not entirely sure why I have it still. Oh well. It's not on that, so don't worry. Um, from here, I'm just creating a couple of arrays. We're going to hold the pins. And then I've created this little cannon class, which I misspelled when I created the class. Ignore that. When you get into the setup, all I'm doing is telling it um, for the button, I want to create that as an input. And then I want to use that as an interrupt. So the what interrupt is, is the Arduino will sit there and just run through this little loop function just over and over and over again until somebody turns off the power. What the interrupt allows me to do is say, stop what you're currently doing, start processing this, and then go back to where you were. That means that no matter what I'm doing with my LEDs, I can hit that button, the Arduino will stop, process what I want the button to do, and then continue on with what it was doing. Then I'm initializing my cannon, and I'm just passing in the pins, the number of strips for each section. Inside my loop, and this is what I was starting with, but decided to move on. I've got a state where if it's charging, then I tell it to charge the cannon, and then I change the state to charge. The Arduino is not a multitasking platform. It will do exactly one thing at a time. So I can tell it to charge the cannon, and that entire animation has to run before I can actually do the next piece. The only thing that will stop that is an interrupt, but my interrupt isn't going to fiddle with this. Once I've changed it to charged, it'll come in here and then loop again. I get this charged section, in which case all I'm doing is telling it to loop. But this time I'm telling it just to loop once. Okay, so here are my timeouts. So it'll actually wait 50, 50 milliseconds before it loops again. But I'm just doing it once, and I'm relying on this main loop to then control what happens next. When I get into this firing state, it will call a fire cannon and then set the state to off, which is more or less what's an what it is now. The last piece is this on button press, which is my interrupt. You can see if, I, if it's in the off state, and I set it to charging, which means the next time I come in here to my loop, it's going to hit that charging statement by off. Otherwise, if it's already set to charged, and it's just running this little block over and over, then that's what's going to change it to firing. <coughs> Of a fire up this piece here. Okay, the last is this cannon piece, which I'm not going to really dive into, but 
You can see I'm just keeping track of my strips. I've got some functions to help me set some different pieces. Um, well, I'll show you this one. Guys, yeah, so here's my init function. Well, actually, no, let's come back here to, the, to this one. All right, so here is my charge cannon chase. So I have a bunch of different animations that I can do. This is the chase animation. You can see I'm figuring out how much of a change I need to do through every loop. And then I'm doing a for loop over the number of loops that the caller has asked me to make. And then what I've done here is I'm telling it I want to go through each section three times. And now I'm setting every individual pixel, but I'm only setting every third pixel. What that's going to allow me to do, and then set the pixel color here. What it's going to allow me to do is make it look like there are little lights that are slowly moving down each strip of LEDs. Okay, and I need to tell it to delay a little bit. And then I can come in here and set every pixel back to zero. So I turn everything back off. I update my weight change, which basically means each time through the loop I'm getting a shorter and shorter weight, so it'll go faster and faster. And then I do the loop again, which means the next time it's going to set the next set of LEDs, the next time you're just going to get a series of LEDs moving down the line faster and faster and faster. Lastly, I have this fire cannon piece, which is doing the same thing. It's just doing um, a wheel of colors. So I'm just going through that loop and telling it, every time through that loop, just change the color and just follow your standard color wheel around to you, and that's the rainbow effect. Okay, so, um, let's get all this fired up. You must be good. <clears throat> you want it back on the elbow? No, it should be okay. Alright, these LEDs have very specific instructions for how to connect them. <coughs> the first thing you need to do is connect your power. So your power is all connected. Then once the power is connected, you can connect in your data signal. If you do them in the opposite order, there's a very real chance that you're going to burn out the LEDs. So just don't do that. Also, never connect them to a live circuit if you can avoid it. So while you're benching these or doing whatever else you need to to make them work, um, make sure your power is off before you do anything else. So, I've got my circuits in here. Now I can kick my Arduino, or my, yeah, my Arduino. And I've got two options. I've got this little battery connector if I want to use a battery. I'm actually going to cheat and use my little backup battery for my phone. This one just has a little ring that goes around in circles faster and faster and faster. These go down faster and faster and faster until they hit this maximum speed. So this is when it's fully charged. If I hit the button again. <laughs> nice. Brings the charging element or the firing animation and then stops. Charging. Okay, any questions on that? That's how you get shown up. <laughs> <laughs> you putting that code on GitHub? I was not planning on it, but I can. Does anyone want him to put it on GitHub? I want it. <laughs> um, fair warning, the code is hideous. I have not had the chance to actually clean it up yet. So. Okay, with Johnny Five, I can just do 
fact. Can you make that text a whole lot bigger? It's just full of demands, maybe. <laughs> and it'll be the LED for me. I'm going to leave this REPL stuff <coughs> going um, so we can actually look at the LED, but it'll sit there and blink for us. So um, I can come in, and I've already got my package.json, which I've told it to install Johnny 5. So I should, this LED.js, but it'll just run it the same node, LED.js. Get an exception. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's re-upload this standard for model real quick. <clears throat> this is the problem with using different machines for development versus production. Oh, probably fuck if I tell the correct pin. Oh. Why does it think I have them on three different ports? All right, try COM4. Oh, okay, not four. Five, because I'm pretty sure that's the one seconds on. There we go. Okay, and you can see, the standard Formata is not a huge protocol, but it will even tell you, Sketch uses, and you may not be able to see that, but it says, Sketch uses 13K, which is 40% of the program space. Maximum is 30K on the Arduino Nano. Um, global variables use a full K, which is 53% of dynamic memory, which leaves an additional 953 bytes. Okay, so two full bytes of RAM is all you get. So now that's there. Bytes? Key. Kilobytes. Kilobytes, thank you. <laughs> Two full bytes. Yeah. <laughs> Where am I? How do I get here? <laughs> and it still thinks it's on COM4. All right, so now we're going to cheat. Okay, so Johnny5's website is just johnny5.io. Actually, I wonder if I do this. Nope. Um, they've got some... Actually, but I was going to show you this anyway, so I'll the examples real fast. Um, if you're ever not sure what you're doing with Johnny5, you can always go look at the examples, and they'll have examples for everything that it can do. So you have your basic board ready to go, um, which is actually probably where I want to be. Here's for controlling an LED. Okay, and you can even do sliders and all kinds of different things with it. RGB LEDs, um, matrices. So these are really cool if you want to do different sorts of animations. Servos, GPS, colors, motors, all this stuff. And the nice thing is, is that just like with the LED, so let's look at the servo one real fast. Okay, so here's your wire. Power, ground, and then one pin to connect, to control. And again, it's just create the board. Servo equals new servo. And then you can say servo.sweep and it'll do its whole whatever range it can do. Or you can tell it to step, you can tell it to center, you can tell it to go to the max, to the min. A lot of this stuff really makes working with your microcontroller easier. Some of this stuff working with Arduino directly is a little bit complicated. So, all right, let's, let's uh, start board with port. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not telling me 
the Windows version. Well, here's to guessing. Nope, it was fine. Did you miss a closed print? Nope. Okay. Okay, we're connected. And if you look here, the LED is actually blinking. Cool console you're using. This is Commander. Okay, so you can see here, I'm connected to COM5. REPL is initialized. You can see it is actually turning on my LEDs. It's going back and forth between just some default colors. Um, somewhere they tell you how to use the REPL. I've actually never done it before, so I'll quickly look at it. Because we're exposing to the REPL this anode, I can actually come in here and call the anode. Whoops, I spelled it right. And it'll give me information about the anode, which is the RGB LED stuff. Pins, okay, the serial port, um, a bunch of different information about them, high and low values. Okay, and I should be able to actually control them. Problem is I have no idea how to do it for the record. Like I said, I only run through code. But anyway, if you want to do it from here, I know you can. Um, you have to just go through and figure out what the commands are. And the website is really good about this. But again, effectively you're doing the same thing that Phil and I were doing earlier. You can you can use Johnny Five to control it through Bluetooth. You can use Johnny Five to control it through Wi-Fi. Um, and if you're being really adventure, adventurous. You can look for Esperuino. Oh, that is what you meant to say. Esperuino? Yeah. Esperuino. And this is actually a JavaScript running microcontroller. So plug right into your USB, you've got a bunch of different pins, and you can run exactly the code I did only on the actual microcontroller, so not having to use the standard for model like I am. You can just put it on there and do all your coding in JavaScript. That looks too small. <laughs> yeah, that is way too small. It's tiny. I'm getting one. <laughs> <laughs> so, but microcontrollers, are, again, are not solely in the realm of people that know how to program on the C and C++ level. You can do it through C Sharp with Windows Modern Arduino. You can do it through JavaScript with either Esperuino or Johnny 5. Okay, there are a lot of options available if this is something you're looking to get into. Um, and even with this as well, you can buy this particular controller, but they also have ways of uploading the Esperuino logic to the board so that you can then deploy JavaScript code to it and go wrong. Um, but I'm glad that I have some microcontrollers that I don't use anymore because I like theoretically much better, but um, they're called pickaxes. And there are some others. The, the pickaxe is a set of firmware on top of uh, these Arizona microchip brand pick chips. And they're a whole different category of microcontroller, but they do all the same things. You can use those with my pickaxes. You can program in basic. So uh, I. If that's your if, cup of cheese. If that's your cup of cheese. <laughs> I don't actually think it's easier than the Arduino C code that I just 
you know, whatever you want to use, there's something out there. So, yeah, that's all I've got. Cup so. of cheese? <laughs> it's basic. You had to. <laughs>